Did you all know that I did a video recently talking about the dark side of Dimensions duel between Yugi and Kaiba? Because there was a bit of ambiguity on whether Yugi was going to win the duel based on like cards in the field and everything. Spoilers for that video! Yeah, Yugi was legit going to win that duel. However, did you know that there is another duel that has the exact opposite situation where Kaiba seems to be about to win the duel when suddenly at the very last second the duel is interrupted? Outlived your usefulness! Yes, this duel also took place in a movie duel, this time in the Pyramid of Light. In this situation that Kaiba was left in, would he have won the duel without the interruption? As the way things were looking, he was going to revive all three god cards to his side of the field and go for game. And with Yugi having only a Watapan and an obnoxious Celtic Guardian for defense, it does seem as if Kaiba was about to win. For today, let's take a look at the entirety of the duel, see if he was legit going to win this duel, and just for a bit of fun as well, we might as well analyse the whole duel to see if Kaiba was making the most optimal plays he could. Let's find out, shall we? Two important things to note about this duel. One, Kaiba already did a simulation on how this duel would play out, and basically, he got clapped. My dragon! From this though, he did realise he needed something new to deal with Yugi's god cards, and so he is given two cards from Pegasus. One card is the Blue Eyes Shining Dragon, which despite its really cool appearance, I don't really see how this was supposed to defeat the god cards. I'm going to assume that Shining Dragon's third effect, which is you can offer this card as a tribute to destroy any cards you choose, maybe that was somehow capable of destroying the god cards themselves, possibly, or more likely its ability to gain attack for each dragon in the grave was meant to be able to surpass the powers of the gods themselves. So I mean if we look at it like that, okay I can see how Blue Eyes Shining Dragon could outclass the gods to a degree, okay? However, unbeknownst to Pegasus, there was another card that was given to him, and this was the Pyramid of Light. That's the name of the movie. Now this card was secretly put there by Anubis, and for shady reasons. However, I'm gonna be honest with you, I think this is the first shenanigans with the Yugi versus Kaiba duel in this movie, because this card in of itself does almost all of the work against Yugi's god cards. I know Kaiba had to orchestrate getting them all out to the field and a lot of strategy was involved in that, but a card that literally says remove all god cards from the field and it was given to him by an outside force, a bit too broken I think. So for me personally, if it was going to be a really fair duel, then take this card out of Kaiba's deck and just see how Kaiba does with just the shining dragon. It's also worth noting as well that after he got the new cards, he ran the simulation again and this time it came out as Seto Kaiba the winner. And fun fact, if you look closely, you can actually see that Kaiba already knows most of the cards in Yugi's deck. He even knows about his new ace monster. And it also seems to be implied he plans to win by deck out, based on the fact that Yugi still has some life points left, but no cards in his deck. So then with that out of the way, let's take a look at the full duel, shall we? The duel begins with Kaiba going first. His starting hand is revealed to us consisting of Mystical Space Typhoon, Familiar Knight, Rare Metal Dragon, Des Feral Imp, Pet in the Dark Clown, and Deck Destruction Virus. He starts off by summoning Familiar Knight in defense and ending his turn. Now Eagle Eyed viewers might notice that there were some better plays that he could have done there, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Switching over to Yugi's turn, he draws and his hand is also revealed to us. It contains Mirror Force, Sage's Stone, Premature Burial, King's Knight, Queen's Knight, and Magician's Valkyria. Off the bat, this is a huge difference compared to Dark Side of Dimensions, because in that movie, it's really stingy in showing us what each duelist has in the hand. It makes things more suspenseful, because we as the audience don't know what they have, but when we know what cards they have, it makes us understand what's happening with the duel a little bit more, and we can kind of see the plays that they're gonna do. So for videos like this, it's really appreciated. Thank you very much, guys. Yugi summons his Queen's Knight and attacks Familiar Knight. Its effect kicks in, summoning one level four from both players' hands. For Kaiba, he summons Rare Metal Dragon, whereas for Yugi, he summons his King's Knight. This then allows Yugi to summon his Jack's Knight from his deck 
through King's effect. Yugi ends by setting Mirror Force face down. Okay then, so this is the first key moment in the duel. Get ready. It's Kaiba's turn and he draws the Pyramid of Light. He sets it straight away and then makes a big deal about how powerful the card is. I'll keep this card face down on the field until the time is right. Right for me, that is. And then nothing in your deck will make a difference. Although coordinating to Yugi, he has a powerful card face down, isn't a smart thing to do at all. I just hope Yugi doesn't have any back row removal, which luckily he doesn't. But the real misplay here is, is that he had a much superior play to do, but chose not to do it. What do I mean by this? Well, Kaiba could have activated his Mystical Space Typhoon, removing Yugi's Mirror Force. He could then follow up by summoning his Dez Feral Imp in attack. Then, with both it and Rare Metal Dragon, he could attack and destroy two of Yugi's Knights, most likely Queen and Jack's Knights. And what this play would have done is, on Yugi's next turn, where he draws Slife of the Sky Dragon, well, he couldn't summon it, because even if he used his Premature Burial in his hand, he wouldn't have enough materials to summon his God card, thus putting Kaiba at a very strong advantage. However, that is, on paper, the better play. This, though, is not what Kaiba wanted to do, because Kaiba has a victory in mind. It is, in fact, Kaiba's choice to do this, as he wanted Yugi to get out his God card, Slifer. He purposefully left the tributes on the field as his goal was for the perfect defeat of Yugi. We can tie this back into the start of the duel as well. Why didn't he open with a pet in the dark clown on the field with a face down deck destruction virus? Immediately start eradicating the whole of Yugi's deck, get rid of those god cards before they're even a problem. It's a little bit of arrogance, a little bit of cockiness, but I mean, it's ambitious and it does actually work in the end, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's continue. It's Yugi's turn, and he draws and summons Slife of the Sky Dragon with 3,000 attack. It attacks Rare Metal Dragon, dealing 600 damage. Kaiba draws the obligatory summon spell card. That effect is your opponent must special summon as many monsters as possible from their deck to the field as the same type as one monster on the field they control. He uses this on Slifer, and so Yugi is forced to summon Obelisk and Ra from his deck. Kaiba then activates the Pyramid of Light, banishing all of the gods from the game. Seto now having wiped out Yugi's field, and in his mind establishing he was capable of defeating the gods, now takes the offensive. He activates Mystical Space Typhoon to destroy Yugi's Mirror Force. He summons Pet in the Dark Clown and deals 500 damage to Yugi. He then sets Deck Destruction Virus face down. Yugi draws Monster Reborn. He summons Magician's Valkyria and attacks Petten. Kaiba uses Deck Destruction Virus as a result, and through its effect, it removes 10 cards from Yugi's deck. And then Kaiba summons another Petten by banishing the first from the grave. And here is another key moment of the duel, Deck Destruction Virus's activation. This is in fact, one of the win conditions that could effectively defeat Yugi, if played correctly. Because along with being absolutely busted, literally you just take 10 cards at random from your opponent's deck, all Kaiba has to do is stall out a couple turns, wait for Yugi to run out of cards in his deck, and just win by deck out. I mean, it was something he could have done. He's not going to, but it was a possibility. But we'll talk more about that a little bit later as well. Let's let's carry on. Back to Kaiba and he draws Card of Demise. He summons Dez Feral Imp and then activates Card of Demise, drawing five new cards as his hand was empty. This new hand consists of Polymerization, Blue Eyes White Dragon, White Dragon Ritual, Paladin of White Dragon and Attack Guidance Armor. He sacrifices his Dez Feral Imp to Ritual Summon Paladin of White Dragon. He attacks Valkyria and then summons Blue Eyes from his deck by sacrificing Paladin through its effect. When Blue Eyes is summoned through this method from the deck, it's not allowed to attack this turn, so that's why he didn't attack with Blue Eyes. For the record, something that Kaiba could have done as well, but I see why he didn't do it. He could have used his White Dragon Ritual to get rid of his Blue Eyes in hand, so he didn't have to use the Dez Feral Imp on the field, and then he could have attacked with Paladin of White Dragon, attacked with his Dez Feral Imp, and then special summon a Blue Eyes from the deck as well. But he had a Polymerization in hand, and at the end of this turn, he's gonna have two Blue Eyes on the field, so yeah, I can see why he didn't do this play. Yugi's turn, and he draws Mage Power. He uses Premature Burial and Magician's Valkyria and activates Mage Power. He sets two cards, Sage's Stone and Monster Reborn. He attacks Blue Eyes, but Guidance Armor redirects it to Petten. Yugi then loses 10 more cards, including the Dark Magician Girl. A new Petten is then summoned to the field. Kaiba draws his third Blue Eyes White Dragon. 
He then activates polymerization, summoning the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, which he uses to attack Valkyria. Yugi then draws the card that I am definitely not salty that I didn't get when I went to go to the movie all those years ago, the Sorcerer of Dark Magic. He uses Monster Reborn on Dark Magician Girl in the grave and then plays Sage's Stone to summon Dark Magician from what's left of his deck. He then sacrifices both for the summon of Sorcerer of Dark Magic. This monster reduces Ultimate Dragon's attack by 500 for each Magician in the grave that was sent from the field. This totals free, so it destroys Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Kaiba then draws another card that I also didn't get when I went to see this movie in the cinema. Fun fact, I got what upon. Whatever. Kaiba draws his Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. However, he has no plays, so he is forced to end his turn. Yugi draws Exchange. Sorcerer attacks Petin and Deck Destruction Virus attempts to take 10 more cards from Yugi's deck. However, Sorcerer negates it and destroys the card. Kaiba draws Monster Reborn. He resummons Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon from the grave and then sacrifices it for Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. It gains 300 attack for each dragon. There are five in the grave, so it has 4,500. And now Yugi only has 200 life points left and only one card left in his hand, which is Exchange. But wait just a second, five dragon type monsters? Let's count that again. So Kaiba had Rare Metal Dragon at the start of the duel. It was killed by Slifer. He's had three Blue Eyes so far, which he used all three to summon Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. And then Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon went to the graveyard as well. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Oh, but wait a minute. What about Paladin of White Dragon? Believe it or not, it is a dragon. So that would mean there are actually six dragons in the graveyard. So Kaiba would do an additional 300 damage to Yugi with this attack. Thus... He should have won the duel! Shenanigans! Yugi draws and gets Big Shield Gardener. He summons it in defense. Kaiba draws return from the different dimension. This is where Kaiba begins to implement his endgame. He sets it face down and attacks Big Shield Gardener. Next turn, he plans to win the duel. Yugi draws Pot of Greed. He then activates it, which allows him to draw two more cards, which are Waterpon, which gets special summons straight to the field for its effect, and the obnoxious Celtic Guardian, which he summons in defense. Let me see if I've got this right now. You're playing a cream puff and an elf. Well, then it's your funeral. Now, all Yugi has left are two monsters on the field with no back row and an exchange spell card in hand that he cannot use. Kaiba draws Spear Dragon, which unfortunately is immediately discarded due to the negative effects of Card Demise, which was activated five turns ago. Fun fact, had he summoned Spear Dragon, attacked Waterpon, he'd have won the duel. Also fun fun fact, this is probably the only time where Kaiba activates Card Demise, where we see the negative effects of Card Demise. So broken in the anime, my goodness. And here it is, the moment of shenanigans. Kaiba attempts to blow up the Pyramid of Light with Shining Dragon's third effect, with the plan being to use the return from the different dimension he set the previous turn to summon all three gods that are banished back to the field and then attack with all three for what Kaiba describes as the perfect victory. Sadly though, the Yugi plot armor kicks in and Anubis denies the destruction of the Pyramid of Light and then proceeds to take over the duel. Literally, tossing Kaiba aside in the process. Now this really is a shame because for all intents and purposes, this duel was gonna be won by Kaiba. But let's make sure, let's go for all the steps and see if this really was going to work. Shining Dragon's anime effect is rather vague. It is unclear if it can destroy one or several cards based on its effect. If it's the latter, then this is an easy win for Kaiba as he can just nuke the entire field, destroying Yugi's two monsters and then attack the game with all three guards, why not? But more likely, let's just assume it can only destroy one card on the field. Well, the same thing happens, except Kaiba will now have to attack what upon an obnoxious Celtic Guardian, which is a problem, as Kaiba has no cards in hand. So Slifer would be powerless. Ra would also have no attack. However, he has a little bit of life points, so he can increase the monster's attack through his life points just enough so he can destroy obnoxious Celtic Guardian, as keep in mind that monster cannot be destroyed with monsters with more than 1900 attack. However, this would then mean that Obelisk would have to attack what upon, meaning he wouldn't be able to deal any damage this turn. So that would mean Yugi would live for another turn. I'm gonna learn the next card that Yugi's gonna draw wouldn't have helped him out in this situation. So we'd have gone back to Kaiba. Kaiba would have attacked the game. Kaiba won game through attacks. However, 
there's another player where he can win this turn. It was already established early in the movie that Obelisk can tribute two other monsters on the field, destroy all of the opponent's monsters, and then inflict 4,000 life point damage. And also get infinite attack. Don't try to figure out the god card's abilities in the anime. There's... Uh, it's a mess. It's... Don't worry. So, case closed. Kaiba wins. Well, there's a bit of a technicality here, which we have to mention. Technically, Return from the Different Dimension specifically states in its effects that it can only summon your banished monsters. Meaning Kaiba wouldn't be able to summon the Egyptian gods at all. In fact, the only thing he'd be able to summon is two Pet in the Dark clowns that he banished earlier in the duel. I am going to ignore this detail because Kaiba was fully sure this was going to work and I have no reason to doubt he just didn't read the one card part of his strategy. So regardless of what the card says, if he would have used Return for the Different Dimension, I 100% believe it would have revived all of the gods back to his field. It's fine. And that, in honesty, answers the question that I wanted to answer. Yes, at the end of the duel, Kaiba would have won this duel had it not been interrupted. But fun fact, he could have won the duel a lot earlier and in a lot of different ways as well. He could have stalled out the duel, as he had only got one more card left in his deck. The other way he could have won, just don't destroy the Pyramid of Light, just attack with your blue eyes shining dragon, draw some of the other monsters we all know you have in that deck because he still has a stacked deck, just summon them and attack and eventually get game. But it is worth noting that these victories all stem from the use of the Pyramid of Light trap card which does sadly taint this duel slightly for me. As I personally would have loved to have seen this duel without the Purina Light, because that would have been two fair duels, Yugi with all the Egyptian gods at the peak of his power, versus Kaiba with the blue eyes shining dragon. These two going at it would have been interesting. I would like to have seen it. And in a perfect world as well, Kaiba throw his pride aside for just a minute and not go for the perfect victory. He should have just, as soon as he entered this duel, gone for the win straight away, got rid of those monsters, don't even let him get out of those slifers, just let him get milled to the graveyard. And what I'd love to know is, what do you guys think of this duel? Do you like the way that Kaiba played this duel? Do you think it was good that he wanted to go for the perfect victory and really prove he was better than Yugi? Let me know in the comment section below. Now this isn't related to what the video is about, but I wanted to clear this up because I saw a few like discussion threads about it. But people say that Anubis would have won this duel if he had just attacked Obnoxious Celtic Guardian with Andro's Sphinx because it deals half the damage. But keep in mind that Obnoxious Celtic Guardian can't be destroyed by monsters with more than 1900 attack. So there was no situation here where he could have won. I just thought I'd throw that out there just to let you all know. At the end of the day though, guys, this duel technically isn't canon, nor is this movie. Anubis is never mentioned in the manga anywhere. So even if Kaiba would have won this duel, which would have been nice, it wouldn't have counted. This was just made for fun. I hope you enjoyed it regardless. I quite like going through these really like analytical looks at the movie duels. Maybe in the future we can do the Bonds Beyond Time duel just to see how that duel panned out and everything. Thank you all for watching. You have been absolutely fantastic. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed and you want to see more. But other than that, thank you for watching. Catch you later.